Hello legends, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's gonna be a slightly different video, pretty simple. I found a quiet spot here and we're gonna have a look around my Porsche 9M1.2 Turbo S. It's quite a mouthful, these. Uh, my new Porsche, new to me, it's not the latest Turbo S. There's now since been replaced by the 992. Um, but I thought I would do a full spec walk around tour because a lot of people have been asking about it. And um, <clears throat> I mean, it's basically the main reason I got this specific car was because of its spec, which I think is is pretty perfect and suits the car quite well. But I wanted to walk you around that just so we can chat about it. One, but also if you or someone you know are in the market for one of these, to walk you through some of the options that my one has, some which I think are useful and some that I think are less useful. Um, but I, I'm obsessed with this car. I cannot stop driving it. And I think it looks great. So whenever I'm not driving it, I'm basically just staring at it. So look at it just sat there in the background. I'm gonna spin the camera down around now and we're just gonna walk around the car. Right, so here it is. 901.2 Turbo S, 580 horsepower, 0-60 in under three seconds, four wheel drive, obviously. Um, and yeah, I just think it's an absolute stunner. I think it looks really, really good. It's so usable, but I'll do like a review videos, everything at a different time. This is purely spec based. Um, so this is a Turbo S. So the difference uh, with the turbo car is that it's got 40 horsepower more and they basically just come with a stronger spec. So if you tried to spec a turbo to Turbo S levels, it would end up costing you more than just buying a turbo. S effectively. So what are the easiest ways to tell a Turbo S apart from a Turbo? First of all are the rims which you can actually spec on a Turbo but not that many have them. So usually when these center lock rims are on a car it means it's a Turbo S. The yellow brake calipers which also show the fact that they are carbon ceramics. Those come standard on Turbo S's and not Turbos. Uh, and black exhaust tips which obviously suit the spec of my car particularly well here. So black exhaust tips mean Turbo S because a lot of them are debadged. This one's still got all its badges on. Um, but yeah, it's not the cleanest right now. I cleaned it only like two days ago, but there's so much pollen around right now that it gets dirty in two seconds. So I don't want to clean it again for it to um, yeah, just get dirty straight away. So I do apologize, but you can still see the spec. It still looks pretty good. I think black suits this car, this shape so well, especially from the back. I just think it looks fantastic in black. So when I was in the, started, you know, basically when I decided I wanted one of these, I looked for ages for one um, with the right spec because I had a few key options that uh, I wanted the car to have. Um, now I wanted it to be black, ideally. I, I think there's, you know, a few cool graphite blue, I think it is, yeah, um, like Masood's car is stunning. Um, you know, the crayon is really nice, but I don't really particularly like them in white. Um, or, you know, in the yellows or reds. I think it works well in subtle colors and my personal favorite was black. So this has a black metallic, so it's not a standard black. It's like a super metallic black, which isn't gonna come off on camera. So I'm not even gonna really try and show you. Uh, and it's obviously got the Turbo S standard rims, which I think look fantastic, suit the car so well. So, you know, I, most cars, I sometimes think about changing the rims on them. I mean, in the end with this, I, I just don't think it needs it. And I think it looks so good. Um, with these rims on them, especially because usually they come in this like diamond cut look, which I think looks great. And um, I really like them with the diamond cut, but with the black, I think it looks even better. So these were, usually you can't spec them with the black, but these were painted by Porsche and a Porsche center in the exact same paint as the bodywork. So it's got the, the metallic paint on the rims. So you can't see it that much now, but if ever you see this car in for real, you'll you'll really notice it because the rims and the paint on the rims really pop out because it's so metallic, uh, and so it looks really really good. And that was a detail I, I hadn't really noticed until I, I properly got it in the sun. So obviously got those yellow calipers for the carbon ceramics, but the the big main exterior option that I really wanted um, was what's called the Aero Kit. So the aero kit is th that little winglet right there, you see, which comes up. Uh, the aero kit also continues through the rear wing. Um, so the rear wing doesn't actually really change, but it gets these little, see this little bit here where it, whoop, it pops up? Um, that is part of the aero kit. So that's one of the easiest ways to tell the aero kit apart. Usually it just kind of ends there and it's flat. And on aero kit cars, it pops up at the edges. Um, which looks really good and a little bit round on the diffuser it's just kind of beefed up a little bit um and yeah i mean i think that rear wing it just gives it a whole new dynamic um and looks fantastic and on the front it just beefs up the front and makes it a little less round 
Um, you know, you don't notice it on cars that don't have the aero kit, but then once you've seen one, it's hard to then go back. And it's cool that it's basically like a mini little subtle body kit, which is from Porsche themselves. So I really wanted an aero kit car, but for some reason, I don't really know why. Aero kits seem to be more on the convertibles. So on the Cabriolet version of this car, there were loads of specced with aero kits, but not that many coupes. And the coupes which were often had some pretty weird specs. So it was hard to find one in a clean spec with the aero kit. So. That's why I was so happy when, when this car popped up. So it's got the aero kit. It's also got some fun little options, um, like these little plastic bits here. They, so they're usually plastic like this, but they're painted on this car. So painted little slats there, and that looks really cool. Again, it's one of those things you wouldn't really notice, but it just makes the whole car look more clean and kind of finished. And the fact that that's less contrasting. Right now, I've got the uh, little deflector up in the front, so all Turbo S's get that. Um, it's, you can see the Turbo S logo on it right there. Basically a little thing that pumps up with air and just makes it look a bit beefier around front. Uh, you've also got the adaptive cruise control. So that's a pretty beefy option, quite an expensive option, but um, yeah, that was whacked on. Yeah, I didn't buy this car new, obviously. Someone else spec this. Um, and then I bought it with 19,000 kilometers. And it had basically done the bulk of its depreciation. I effectively bought it for half the price that it was new as you'll see when we get inside it's still got all the plastic on the screens and stuff it still smells brand new so yeah that felt that felt pretty good uh, what else do we have we've got the pdls lights so they're basically the highest grade front lights um, and they're finished in black um so that complements the look quite nicely um, and they're also just fantastic when you're driving i mean they're directional and they just they, they just work really well as all things really with Porsche. And then the, the, the big thing which made me completely crack when I saw this was the carbon on the outside. So it's got this little triangle that's a separate option to the wing mirrors, but it's got those two in, in uh, carbon. They can come in body color, body paint, or I think in that kind of plastic, like you can see here, um, they come like that as well. Uh, so those are in carbon. These air vents are in carbon. Um, so this is all what they call Porsche manufacturer options. It's kind of like the Ferrari Atelier or MSO or whatever. And so it looks really nice and you don't see that many with them. And so I was really, really pumped to see that, that it had that. That usually comes in the plastic or you can spec it in body color as well. And the engine cover right here. What engine cover? It's not much of an engine cover, but these little slats are in carbon fiber as well. Again, those are either they're standard in that plastic or you can get them painted uh, as well. A few other options which were painted are like the rear diffuser again, that usually comes in the plastic that was painted in body color. Um, so I think that looks a lot nicer. It just means it's much more uniform around the back. And so you don't really notice it when it's all done like this. It just looks clean. But when it's in plastic, it's just, yeah, it doesn't have that glossy finish. So it really contrasts. So, yeah, that's basically everything on the outside of this car spec wise. And I think it just all comes together for like a really, really nice package. But the big thing was the aero kit, those rims. Uh, and the carbon those are the big things which really made me kind of crack for the car i mean like you know the, the painted slats and stuff are very nice to have but they're, they're 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 not the most noticeable differences but then things get pretty wacky when you go inside oh it's oh it does have actually this is kind of fun it's got the keyless go so keyless entry so if the car's locked up like this this is why there's so many fingerprint marks around here let me show you if you have the key in your pocket, all you do is you swipe like that and then the boot opens. So it's super convenient. We've got some cleaning stuff and a jacket in there right now. Super convenient, but it does leave fingerprint marks all over the place. And when you're power washing the car, the boot keeps opening, which is quite annoying. But hey-ho. And then if you want to open the, 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 the car, so this is to lock it, you just press there. And then if you want to open it, you just pull the door handle and off you go. So the interior. The interior is really nice. And it's... Yeah, I just think it's such a it's kind of simple but nice spec. I'm obviously super biased because, yeah, I, I just love this car so much. So let me know if you like the spec. You know, it's obviously something which is very subjective and, and down to personal taste. But I, I think they've done a really good job with this. And with Porsche, because there's so many options, you rarely kind of get cars that are exact, exactly the same. So, you know, every car is kind of individual because there's so many different things you need to spec to get your final product. So what we have is the full extended Napa leather all over black leather so that means that you get leather on the top part of the door here you get leather above the dash all the way around and contrasting white stitching which i really like so the contrasting white stitching goes all over to on the door seals on the seats on top of the dash even round back i don't know if you can see but see it's got the contrast white stitching there the back seats have the contrast white stitching 
um, and it just looks really clean back there. So that's really, really nice. While we're starting on the door, we can talk about uh, one of the big main options for the interior that I really wanted is the Burmeister Hi-Fi sound system. So you can choose between a standard system by Porsche, I believe, and there's Bose make a system and then there's Burmeister and this is one of the best sound systems I've ever heard in a car it's unbelievable uh, I think it's a three or four thousand euro option um, but it is it's just so good and on all 991.2 so the facelift versions you get Apple CarPlay as standard so having Apple CarPlay with the Burmeister just works so well and that was one of the big options I really wanted and, and I would highly highly recommend uh, looking for a car with Burmeister uh, not that many have it, obviously because it's such an expensive option it's a it's an extravagant one to have but it is it is worth um worth the money because it, it's it's just so good so very happy that it has that I, it's one of those that i it wasn't essential for me when i was looking for the car but now that uh, i've been driving it around it, it would definitely be one that i would say would have to go on your essential list because it's just unbelievable so yes uh it's got the burmeister also a bit more carbon added here so this isn't standard this is an option so uh, carbon fiber door sill door entrance things with the illuminated turbo s logo all the rest of the carbon is standard on turbo s's they come standard with carbon fiber so carbon fiber on the door sills carbon fiber all around um the, the cabin basically but this is an, a, an extra one and it looks really nice again you, when you see the standard option um it's not quite the same it's just kind of like a and an aluminium type uh, plaque there with a, a black text Turbo S. Uh, so not quite the same. Then we get onto the, <laughs> the pretty flashy, but I think very cool looking yellow seat belts. Uh, so yellow seat belts to go with the yellow brake calipers. So a little touch on the interior to complement the exterior. I think it looks great. It looks cool around back as well. It's just a little touch of color in the interior because the rest is completely black and white, uh, including the background of or background what would you say well the uh yeah the rev counter all of the dials are in in, in white um so that's an option as well you can choose what you want them in you can get them in yellow i think that's a little bit too too colorful for me i really like the white finish and it continues on the sport chrono right there but that sport chrono package in general is standard on turbo s's but the white dials i think look great and uh, yeah it's also got quite a bit of alcantara um so the seats are on a leather kind of base with the white stitching and it's got the embossed Porsche logo there. But then the rest of it is uh, in Alcantara. So you can, these are the 18 way adjustable ones. You can get carbon seats, carbon buckets, which look amazing. They're beautiful. And they're actually kind of a bit more practical because they're thinner, more thin, sorry, than, than these seats. Um, so you can kind of fit someone a little bit taller around back when you've got the bucket seats, but they're just nowhere near as comfortable as these. These are the 18 way adjustables, heated seats. Um, I think they look really nice with the little shoulder bolsters right there, but, uh, they're, yeah, they're, you can do long road trips. No problem with these. And I think they're the right compromise for a turbo. I think the bucket seats are maybe slightly too much for me. Uh, I was very, I'm very pleased that then it's got these. So yeah, 18 way adjustable seats. So you've got like the leg bolsters, which will pop out like that. Um, obviously memory seat, two way memory seat. Only for the driver's seat though. Um, but it looks very cool. Very comfortable with the Alcantara and the leather. I think it's a nice contrast, sporty without being overkill. And it's also got the leather back of the seats. So usually that comes in this finish, this kind of aluminium finish right here. The whole back of the seat is like that. Uh, this one was specced with so leather with contrast stitching on the back of the seat, which is a nice touch when you're sat back there. It's also got the Alcantara center little storage lid here, uh, which has the wireless charging down there as well. Um, that with the Porsche logo as well, which is a nice touch. So I think it's an option to have an Alcantara and the Porsche logo on top of it is an extra option. So let's hop in. The keyless um, entry does mean that you have this little kind of makeshift key, which is always there on the left, as with all Porsches. And that just always stays there. And as long as you have the key in your pocket, foot on the brake, turn that, car goes on. So electric steering wheel, as you just saw, it, it moved down um, as, I, as I started the car up. Let's close this. Uh, electric steering wheel. It's also the multifunction steering wheel. So you've got your volume controls, your phone, your favorites. And this little uh, thing here, which controls that screen. So you can get everything from like your sat nav, your G-forces, loads of information, 
um, all up on that screen. So that's a really nice touch. I think it looks great. And uh, the steering wheel in general is just so nice. It's, it's quite thick, it's quite a small wheel, but the design in general is nice. And this one was spec to the Alcantara wheel, um, which is uh, really, really comfortable. But also with the white stitching, I think it just looks great and complements the rest of the interior with the white stitching so well. So that's very nice. And it's actually got a hidden little button here, which boom, when you press that, it comes up. And uh, well, my car's in French now, but that is for the heated steering wheel. So really nice to have a heated steering wheel as well. Quite nice in Geneva in the winter or whatever. Um, it will be really nice to be able to, to drive around with that. This is where you control also your different modes. So sport mode. You can hear the car seems to get a bit louder, but basically the revs just go up a bit because Turbo S's don't have valves. Sport plus individual, but normal mode is when you drive it around town and how I drive it most of the time, to be honest. So that, I'm just thinking, did I miss anything? I think that's pretty much it in terms of the spec around here. You do have the Alcantara headlining, uh, Alcantara sun visors. That is an extra option. Usually those come in a kind of <clears throat> just mesh finish. This has got the Alcantara ones. And yeah, so all this carbon is standard. Uh, obviously, as we mentioned, we got all the stitching. It's still got the plastic on the screen here. Apple CarPlay on this. One key option it's got as well, um, when you've got the reflect deflectors or, or whatever you call it around front, uh, down, you know, applied, so out. Now the car's quite low, so then it's got a lift system, which is an extra option. And not that many have it, because the car's not really that low. But it is nice to have when you're going in sort of a really you know, a steep driveway or anything. You do have a little lift system. Auto start stuff off. This is the Porsche Dynamic uh, chassis control button, which basically just stiffens up your, your um, suspension. And then the controls for the panoramic sunroof. So panoramic sunroof is an, an extra option as well really nice this is one i would say go for if you can i would i would recommend it just adds so much light to the cabin and is is the right compromise between the convertible and the coupe so you can press this top button here and that like shade comes over so in case there's a lot of sun when you park the car up somewhere warm you can put that you've got this middle button which just opens the rear which you know lets a bit of the noise in so if ever i put an exhaust on it that will be really nice to drive around like that but it's also you know i think if you have like kids that you leave in the car for a little bit and you want air to be able to come in stuff like that or you just press that all the way down and the roof opens it doesn't open all the way but it opens quite a bit and it, it frees up um yeah all that space and just uh, yeah lets a lot more air in it's just so nice to be able to to have that so that is one i would also say like the burmeister is well worth it all the rest of the spec things are very nice but they're not essential you know the alcantara the stitching stuff like that um yeah i think that's pretty much it those are the rear seats you can see all the alcantara headlining which continues all the way around back the stitching on the seats the seat belts as well it's got the Alcantara on the um, little gear shifter right here so it's obviously got pdk seven speed pdk and overall I just think it's a very, very clean spec. Leather all over. I'm just trying to think if I missed anything. I think that's pretty much it for the interior and the exterior. But yeah, it's um, it's very nice. I mean, the guy who spec this, uh, I, again, as I say, it's very subjective. I, I think he did a great job and I'm very, very happy with his decisions. There you go. I mean, I hope you found that interesting. That was a walk around. I'm sorry if I sounded quite monotone. I still need to be quite careful with my voice not to push on it too much after my operation. But um, this is my Porsche 991.2 Turbo S. It's always a mouthful to say that it feels like a dream it feels completely surreal i can't believe it i am daily driving this i think i've driven it every single day since i got the car and loving it so much every mile it just gets better and better and uh it's so nice to drive but then it's also so cool to look at on the outside i just find it so so good looking so i'm um, very very pleased i feel so yeah i'm so grateful to be able to to have this car and share it with you guys as well so i hope you found that interesting a little run through the spec of my car the essential options you know i'd say are the aero kit the sound system the roof the opening roof and obviously i really like the little carbon finishes as well but hope you guys enjoyed that video hope you found it interesting to to see around my spec and um I look forward to seeing you again for another video very soon subscribe if you aren't already because there's loads of videos with with this car with my 430 scuderia and loads of stuff coming so yeah Thank you so much, as always, for watching the video. Please like it if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.